is Irene Gobriel. I'm an associate professor of medicine at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Harvard Medical School, and I will be discussing multiple myeloma. So multiple myeloma is a plasma cell malignancy, so it arises from plasma cells which are terminally differentiated B cells. And it starts with an early precursor condition called MGUS, monoclonal gamopsy of undetermined significance, and then it can progress to smoldering myeloma, and then to overt or symptomatic multiple myeloma. MGUS is a very common disease. We see it in 3% of the population over the age of 50. Smoldering myeloma is less common, but the rate of progression of MGUS is 1% per year. And those patients may have many years without ever progressing into real myeloma. Myeloma is defined by having a monoclonal protein in the peripheral blood or light chains, so either a heavy chain or a light chain, and I'll discuss that in a second, as well as the presence of plasma cells in the bone marrow, and these have to be clonal plasma cells, and we usually define it as 10% or more plasma cells in the bone marrow. Now, patients with multiple myeloma have to have symptomatic disease or end organ damage, and we define this by something called CRAB criteria. C-R-A-B. So C stands for hypercalcemia, R is for renal failure, A is for anemia, and B is bone lytic lesions. And again, remember that these have to be related to the multiple myeloma. So if someone has anemia because of an iron deficiency or has renal failure because of hypertension or diabetes, this would not fulfill the criteria of multiple myeloma. There are some patients who would not be secreting a monoclonal protein, and these would be non-secretory myeloma. So if a patient comes in and has anemia or bone pain and you look for a monoclonal protein and you do a serum protein electrophoresis and you find an M spike, which is the clonal protein, then you start thinking of multiple myeloma. And we do a bone marrow biopsy. And by immunohistochemistry, you want to find that in these, those are plasma cells, CD38 positive, CD138 positive, and 19 negative. And usually they secrete one type of clonal protein in the peripheral blood. So we have five different types, IgG, IgA, M, and so on. The most common one, of course, is IgG. And the most common light chain is kappa. So IgG kappa is the most common type of protein that we see in our patients. The light chains that they secrete, kappa or lambda, can also be measured in the blood by a serum-free light chain assay. So we do a kappa level, a lambda level, and then the ratio of kappa to lambda. Those patients may also secrete the protein in the urine, and we call that Benz-Jones proteins and you can measure it by doing a 24-hour protein electrophoresis. For you to diagnose a patient with multiple myeloma, you want to do a complete blood count to see if they have anemia. You want to do a chemistry profile to see if they have hypercalcemia or renal insufficiency. And of course, you want to look for the monoclonal protein by serum protein electrophoresis and immunofixation, which will give you the type of immunoglobulin that they're secreting, as well as serum-free light chain, and of course, the bone marrow biopsy. And then you do imaging to look for the bone lesions and in general, we do a skeletal survey, which is just bone x-rays that we do. We do not do a bone scan because those lesions are purely osteolytic, so you will not be seeing it in a bone scan. You want to do x-rays or skeletal survey. And these days, we will do a low-dose CT scan or a PET CT scan for those patients to diagnose them. Once you diagnose the patient, you want to look for staging system. So you want to look at prognostic factors, including albumin and beta-2 microglobulin. That would be the international staging system. And then you also want to look in the bone marrow at cytogenetics and fish analysis to look at prognostic markers for those patients. And once we have them diagnosed, then you start treatment. And there are many options of treatment for those patients, including proteasome inhibitors like uh, bortezomib or carfilzomib, including immunomodulators like lenalidomide or thalidomide, and of course, steroids like dexamethasone. And then we transplant many patients who are on the younger side or who are transplant eligible and capable of going through high-dose melphalan.